A Vanadinite tutorial. Vanadinite is a dense and brittle reddish brown secondary phosphate mineral composed of vanadium, lead, oxygen, and chlorine. It typically occurs as an oxidation product of lead ores and is commonly associated with the oxidation of galena. It actually belongs to the apatite group of phosphate minerals and is one of the main industrial ores of vanadium, which can be extracted by roasting and smelting. It is occasionally used as a source of lead as well. Its crystallised form scores just three on the Mohs hardness scale. Faceted vanadinite is a tremendous rarity. It is not an easy mineral to work, and larger crystals are hard to come by. It is believed that fewer than 10 faceted vanadinite crystals have ever been cut. The most common pieces on the market will feature the naturally terminated crystals, rather than polished, tumbled or faceted items. Whilst vanadinite crystals aren't toxic in themselves, the lead and vanadium components can be harmful if inhaled, so the naturally occurring dust created during the mining process can be dangerous without proper safety measures and equipment. Vanadinite specimens usually feature a fairly consistent distribution of colour, in hues which include autumnal bright reds, brick oranges and russet browns. As a transition metal element, the atomic structure causes the absorption of certain colour wavelengths with invisible light. This is why vanadinite crystals appear in the autumnal shades of the chromatic spectrum. When vanadinite occurs as inclusions within a host mineral, the colour appears to be green. Emeralds and diopside can get their beautiful green colours from inclusions of vanadium. It tends to be translucent to opaque, with a resinous to adamantine luster. It is one of the heavier minerals, and is also incredibly brittle. It produces little conchoidal fragments when fractured. Vanadinite forms as simple hexagonal prisms, and will often cover an external matrix as a druzy, or as an aggregation of tightly packed clusters of red crystals. The crystals tend to be on the smaller side, but perfect hexagonal vanadinite crystals have been found in larger formations. It was first discovered in the Purissima del Cardenal mine, near Zimapan, Mexico, in 1801, by Spanish mineralogist Andres Manuel del Rio. He called the material brown lead, and in an early attempt to investigate the component elements, he discovered a new substance, which he initially named panchromium, but later altered to erythronium because of its blood-red tones. He sent the results of his investigation to be verified by European experts, however, the ship carrying his work was wrecked at sea. In 1831, the element vanadium was discovered by Swedish scientist Nils Gabriel Seftström, which was later revealed to be almost identical to the erythronium that Del Rio had reported within his brown lead. In 1838, his brown lead was renamed vanadinite on account of its high vanadium content. The name chosen by the Swedish Seftström, vanadium, came from the Old Norse vanadis, which is one name of the Scandinavian Freya, wife of Odin, and goddess of youth, fertility, beauty, love, and the dead. Deposits are found across the world, mostly in arid desert localities. Most notable locations include Argentina, Austria, Mexico, Morocco, Namibia, South Africa, Spain, and the Ural Mountains of Russia. It is also found in four American states, Arizona, Colorado, New Mexico, and South Dakota. Whilst vanadinite has been a popular collector's item, it didn't really attain high status as a display mineral until large and brilliant bright red crystals surfaced in the Moroccan deposits of the Mibaldan district in the early 2000s. These exceeded all prior discoveries in size, beauty, and general appeal, and triggered a large-scale mining boom in the area. The most successful pockets of vanadinite contained in excess of $10,000 worth of crystals. Large quantities of the impressive scarlet specimens were extracted and then sold on to dealers, who had the intention of ultimately exporting it. However, a fact which was undisclosed at the point of sale was that the endeavour would be particularly challenging on account of the fact that it was technically illegal to ship minerals out of Morocco at the time. The dealers had to get creative at this stage, and took to packaging specimens of the vanadinite they had purchased into rolled carpets and large cooking pots in order to conceal them within shipments. Their efforts paid off, and to this day, Morocco is credited with the world's finest vanadinite. 
This episode was written and researched by Charlie Forever Dark and narrated by Jay Hart. Thank you for watching that video. Now, my name is Luke and I'm one of the writers here at Salt Shack. Now, what we do here is we teach people geology, mineralogy, gemology, archaeology, paleontology, and all manner of ologies as it pertains to very interesting things that come out of the ground. We'll teach you how something forms or how it gets its colour. We'll tell you how to identify it. We'll tell you diagnostic techniques. We'll tell you all about fakes and we'll tell you the history and maybe mythology and how indelibly etched many of the things that we sell are into ancient folklore and the stories of very interesting civilizations. Now, if you want to better understand these things in order to have a more well-rounded understanding of very cryptic subjects or to better insulate yourself from many of the duplicitous practices that go on within the crystal industry, then why not follow us and join the club?